Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> Welcome to my channel for the first time. If you've never been here before, welcome. Um, so I recorded a video probably a couple days ago about like the things I learned my first year of vet school. But that's probably going to come out after this video just because of the sheer fact that I think this video is more important for the people that are actually getting interviews soon and don't know it yet. So if you've applied to veterinary school and you're about to hear back from interviews, this video is for you and if you also haven't applied to med school yet but you know you will be and you know one day you're gonna have an interview this video is also for you and the people that don't even know it yet they don't even know they're going to med school or gonna apply to med school this video is still for you it's for everybody if you're wondering why my hair looks like this i had a y2k party i went to yesterday so this is the hair that it was giving last night um my little my little clip is kind of out of out of center but Besides point, this was the vibe, and it was super cute. Um, you may or may not see clips of that in my next vlog. I'm not sure. I don't remember how much I actually recorded. So, we'll see. And plus, I was on an aux, so if I don't have no clips, I was on an aux, so I was messing up the music. I can't be recording doing that, too. Let's get into this video, because this video is kind of what's most important. So, the first point I have is you want to set up your interview backdrop situation your background or your um interview station where you're going to be setting up your interview if you're doing this online whether it be via zoom or whether it be recorded because i know some schools do recording some schools do zoom i will talk about both because i experienced both when i applied to vet school this station right here that i'm actually sitting in is actually a really good station to be in because it's nothing but a plain background nothing super eye-catching nothing is drawing your attention to something crazy like it's it's just plain wall and it's a little bit of plant and picture that's that's nothing and even my head is technically blocking the plant and the picture so it's just the background so this is the kind of station you want you want a neutral background with no distractions no purses hanging up in the corner no uh people walking by you want to also have a really um quiet area where you're not in front of distractions like i don't have pluto in here right now because i kicked it out for other reasons not because he was doing anything but i kicked him out um and you want a quiet non-distractful environment where you can actually sit down and talk to these people or record your interviews i remember like i was doing it in my room and in my room at home my mom's room is right across the hall and she's loud like she's loud and don't realize how loud she is so she'll be walking by singing and i'm like look ma'am i'm about to start an interview i need you to stop <laughs> i need you to just for two hours, maybe even an hour and 30, just zip it, lock it, and put it in your pocket, okay? Because I need to make sure they don't hear you singing in the back of my video. <laughs> like, I need to record. So, I have to still tell her that even when I'm recording YouTube videos. I'm like, look, you're in the back of my video, so if you want to be heard, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> like, and she understands. She's like, oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just go somewhere where there's a neutral environment, not a lot on your walls if you're going to do it at home. No distractions, no babies, no dogs, no cats, no nothing. Just silence. And I'm sure you probably hear Pluto in the background screaming for me to open the door, but I'm not. That's for my online interview people. But if you're going to go in person, because some schools still do in-person interviews, believe it or not, um, set aside time to get ready to travel and to be there early. It's better to arrive 10 to 15 minutes early, okay? You don't want to be late to this interview because it already gives them the bad impression that you don't know what you're doing. Um, I recommend if you have it online to also check your Zoom links ahead of time or whatever the case may be to make sure you're prepared to do this. Um, and my dad will always say, you make a better impression by being five minutes early than being five minutes late. So remember that, let it stick in your head, I'll put it at the bottom so you don't forget. Shout out my dad, because he will always say that and I still have a problem with lateness. So I'm pretty sure he's looking down at me like, Julia, you're not even living by what you're saying right now. And he's right, <laughs> I'm working on it. Before I kind of get into the next point, I'm gonna talk about the difference between my online and my virtual recording experience. So. Virginia, Maryland does um, online recording multiple, it's like MMPIs, I think, I don't want to know what it stands for right now, but basically do like multiple part interviews, like that may be what it is, <laughs> but like multiple parts, and you'll go on like a website, log in with your credentials, and they'll give you a prompt, like you, you can do this whenever, you just have like a deadline of like a week or two, maybe, and you sit down wherever, get ready, get presentable, whatever, sit down, you start the interview, you listen to the prompt, and then you have to record your response. So it's a very low maintenance interview. Um, 
I loved it. I thought it was amazing because of the sheer fact that it took away a lot of my stress. And you even get a few minutes, like I give you like five minutes to decompress with the question and to answer it in your own head. So when I was doing it, I was sitting here out loud like, okay, this is how we're going to answer it. This is how we're going to say it. We're going to make sure we smile. Like, I'm going to get all into that. But do you have to really sit there and, you know, you have time to plan it out to figure out how you're going to be presentable on the camera. Excuse me. As opposed to a Zoom where they're looking at you and they want you to answer immediately. It's a little bit more nerve wracking because you want to say the right thing. Like you want to not mess it up and say the right thing. Um, I did that for Tuskegee. Tuskegee also, they had the um, Zoom interview for me and it went really well. Um, I was really nervous, of course, because I was in front of two very well-renowned doctors that I didn't know. Um, and, you know, I'll get more into that later, but it was really, it was a good interview. It ended up being really well. So I'll talk about that as time continues on. So my next point is looking the part okay so you want to make sure you're presentable brush your hair brush your teeth wash your face i wouldn't recommend having a pimple patch on <laughs> while you're on the thing but if it comes down to it you are who you are pick out your outfit and you can even if you're a girl do your makeup because i did my makeup and i'll put a picture there because i have a picture of that and I, it made me feel a lot more confident when i was doing my interview because i felt like that girl like i felt like oh it's a baddie okay and that's how i felt and I think when you feel better, even even in person, if you're going in, if you're going into the interview, look your part, look, be confident. Like, and the best way to feel confident about yourself is to look the part. So when you look the part, you look in the mirror and you can say, I look good. I'm a rock this interview. That's how you know you better come in with that with that fire. OK, so like I think it's really important to look the part and feel confident as you're walking into a building where you're not going to know nobody. And these people are speculating you with a magnifying glass like you want to come in being yourself being who you are now I, I would not recommend you coming in with orange lipstick or blue lipstick i think you should tump down for the interview um keep it natural keep it cute keep it glam like not too much i did have some really big eyelashes on which i was actually concerned that that would be too much for them but it actually ended up not being so i still don't recommend having overly big fluffy lashes get some nice natural makeup nice natural lashes keep it as natural as possible um because i don't think you should do the most because they're going to be looking at your lashes and not you <laughs> if that makes sense the next part that i'm going to talk about is practicing deep breathing techniques um and i say that because it helps reduce anxiety and i'm someone who my therapist actually told me julie you need to be doing the 369 method and i'm like what is that like what is the 369 method and she was like i'm gonna let you try it and see how it works so like and she said you want to get into a practice doing it when you're in an anxiety filled state so that will obviously be before your interview, right? Because you're covered in anxiety. Anxiety is like that new Inside Out movie where they had the little anxiety one. And she's like orange and she's cute. But she's like a nut. And I wouldn't know because I haven't seen the movie yet. But from the clip I saw, it's like we have 20 of them in our head driving our, you know, body and our sympathetic nervous system. So you want to get your sympathetic nervous system to calm down and put your parasympathetic back on so you could think logically as you're answering your interview. That's the science behind it. 369 method I'm going to talk about it so 369 method is basically where you inhale for three seconds and you when I say inhale it's like for three seconds you hold it for six and you exhale for nine so it's it's very I love it like when I'm in a state of anxiety and I do that about maybe three or four times consistently I can feel from going like this from shaking to just like calmness you can feel the difference it's like your brain's like okay we are okay like it feels a lot better so I recommend doing that if you're in if you have high anxiety or if you have high anxiety just with certain situations like with the interview or with anything in life I think you guys should try the 369 method it helps a lot now when I'm in an anxiety filled state that's all I do I sit there and you'll see me like before the exam can't breathe for six seconds letting it out for nine okay like that's i'm really doing that and it really does make a difference so i think that could be useful in person and online like if you get there early 10 15 minutes early you have time to through your 369 by the time you walk through the door to talk to your interviewers you feel very different so yeah i think you should try that guys i think you guys would like it my next point is to make sure you greet your interviewer if you have one so if you're online doing the virginia maryland one and it doesn't have an interviewer that you're actually talking to and you're just talking to somebody we'll get into that you don't really have to greet them per se because there's nobody to greet <laughs> that makes sense if you have a zoom like i did with tuskegee you would want to like say hey like how are you today you guys um my name is so and so blah 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 you're gonna get to that whole greeting and you're gonna start by just with a smile because people love friendly people 
So you want to come off as a friendly person because you're not in this field because you're a bad person. That's not how that works. You're in this field because you're a very friendly person and you could be communicative and they want to see that because communication is a very big part of vet med especially because if you can't communicate to the people interviewing you how are you going to be able to communicate to your patients you have to have that you know what i mean you got to have both sides it's really important to make sure that you greet your interviewer and even if it's like with a simple hello how are you today like with a smile um and that look kind of fake but you want to make it real <laughs> just asking them how they're doing today just something simple and you know smiles like they what they say like if you you never know how you can make somebody's day better with a smile some some cliche thing like that it's the truth i think it's really real and if you're online where you're recording your responses like with virginia maryland not really much you can do when you're not talking to somebody directly talking to somebody kind of gives you more of a leeway to make to make them understand who you are versus as you have to do that without that right you have to when you're doing a Virginia Maryland interview, you have to do that by just showing them who you are via your recording. You want to make sure that you're answering in the most genuine way possible. Because people can tell when you're being disingenuous. So when they go back and re like read, or not read, but like listen to your recordings and watch your recordings, they're going to see how genuine you are based on your posture. Like you, want, you don't want to be sitting like this. Like you want to be sitting upright like you want to be saying this like yes and da, da, da. like you want to seem personable and you want to seem really really friendly and genuine so the first part of it was for them to get to pick your application right that you have to do enough to make sure that they want to learn more like oh they want to learn more about me that's why they chose me for the interview the interview is another portion where you're going to sit there and show them more about who you are until they decide they want you in your program that's when they're going to learn who you truly are once you're in the program but the first two steps the application and the interview are made to kind of see who you are learn more about who you are learn more about your ethics learn more about your morals that's kind of what the interviews for so when you're doing that especially for your recordings or your zooms or even your in-persons that you're in your core points about who you are i have a tidbit i actually want to read because i typed it out like this and i want to read it the way it is so i said on my notes which i mean in my heart they picked your application to learn more about you kind of like what i just said which is one of the hardest phases to get past. And that's the truth. I literally lied to you now when I got my interview from Virginia, Maryland. The, like, the document said, I wish I could find the, I don't even know if I have a picture of it. But they literally told me, we selected your interview, I mean, your, like, your application out of, I'm about to see if I can find it. We selected your, your application out of, like, a thousand and something. I was like, hmm? Hmm? I'm trying to see if I can find it for y'all so that way we can read it together because I don't remember what it said. Okay. I found it December 9th 2021 when I got this email freaking out because of course you know when you apply for a vet school you are sitting on the edge of your seat every day waiting for a response waiting you're like oh my god is it today is it today is it today? like you're freaking out so I got this interview I want to see what I mean this interview I, wanna, I got this email what time did I get this email because you know sometimes that also freaks you out 6 1 p.m and I'm pretty sure I was in class or or I just got out of class because I don't think I had six o'clock classes in 2021. I get this, <laughs> I get this email. It's like I, it's freaking me out reading it, and it says, "Dear Jalea," and uh, you know when stuff starts like that, you like, "Oh crap! I don't know how this gonna go." After consideration of 1,900 applicants, the admissions committee of Virginia Maryland is pleased to offer you the opportunity for a seat within the DVM class of 2026. I said, "What? 1,900?" that's crazy 1800 is still a lot of people that's almost two grand what and they said you are one are one of only 400 individuals selected for this opportunity so congratulations y'all i literally could have passed out resurrected passed out again and resurrected again like if you don't know anything about virginia maryland not to stress out my virginia maryland babies that have applied because don't stress about it but they usually take about uh, it's only 126 seats in a class like my class has 124 people have left 124 seats um 50 of them come from virginia 30 come up 30 come from maryland and six from west virginia that's how they usually and 40 are out of state for, for out of state residents that aren't you know dc Mar that aren't maryland or virginia or west virginia so Let's keep that in mind that that's a very low number of people to receive something from. So when I read this, y'all, I was I was in shock. I literally, I think I called my mom. I was crying. I was so happy. It was just, it was a very beautiful opportunity. Um, and sometimes I think I should read this more often because I can't believe I'm sitting here sometimes. And I'm going to screenshot this and keep it because 
it really did freak me out when I read it. My next point, and this is my most important point, guys. Most important. Be who you are. Be yourself, okay? I like me, period. Like, but I'm saying that to say, like, this is the hardest part to get by. So if you got an interview, pat yourself on the mother freaking back, okay? Because that's hard. That's the first step. Like, what? So you have to rock this portion because that means you're going to get in. Like, you have to rock it. You got to rock it. Like, we're trying to say so rock it. You got to rock it. Like, I'm, I'm rooting for y'all for real. So really, you got to make sure that you understand that this part, the first part was the hardest part. This is the easiest part where you get to just be yourself, right? You get to just take a, they chose me. They chose my application. Now I got to show them why I'm here and why I'm the right choice. Make sure that you're answering the questions. If you don't remember what they said, this is how to, not really for the recordings because I believe actually, I don't know if I'm wrong about this, but I think I was able to, if I wanted to go back and record the question, I think you can re-record it. So if you have to re-record it, which I think you can, um, make sure you're answering the question wholly. If you missed the part, start over. Like keep starting over. Make sure you're, that is your perfect take. Okay. And it's okay for you to start over. And I think, I think they let you, I'm not sure. I forgot. But if you don't remember, you have an actual interviewer and you're not doing like a recording, ask the person like, Hey, did I answer all your points? Or do you think, or did I miss anything? They'll respect that. Be like, Oh, she's asking me if she missed something or he's asking me if he missed something. Let me read the question again to make sure he, he got all his points. And I asked my Tuskegee person that and I was like, did I get, did I answer your question correctly? Like all your points? And he said, you did, but you didn't answer this part. I said, I'm so sorry about that. Let me go back and answer that portion as well. That's first of all, that sounds so professional, right? Like if you, you could have just kept going and been so nerve wracked that you didn't even like think about answering the question, but answering the question wholly and completely is really important because they want to see you hit every single point so that would be no all the points we need to know about you it's also to get oh it's also okay to get nervous and misspeak i just did that <laughs> like you just i hope y'all peep that it's okay to get nervous it's okay to misspeak if you do here's what i recommend that you say this is what kind of what i said um with one of my interviews i don't remember what interview it was it wasn't virginia Brown, so i'm gonna assume it was tuskegee <laughs> um and I said, I apologize if I'm talking super fast. <laughs> I'm slightly nervous about this interview, so please bear with me. And they actually laughed at me. <laughs> like, the two interviews I had at Tuskegee, they laughed at me. And they were like, it's okay. We know y'all are nervous. Like, we understand. And they was like, you're doing great. Um, you don't have to slow down. You're actually not talking that fast. And sometimes in our head, we think we're talking a mile a minute. Like, sometimes even when I'm recording these videos, I'm like, I am talking so much and so fast. And you really aren't. <laughs> like, you're talking normally. I remember I did that for one of my other videos. I went back and watched it. I sounded fine. <laughs> I was like, oh, I thought I was talking a lot and pretty fast. But nope, I wasn't. My next point, most of the prompts turn into some story about your life. They do that on purpose. They do that because you want to see how you can relate one situation to your life like something that's actually happened to you so for example which i have an example here there was a prompt that asked me to explain the time where i had to deal with a different a difficult customer and how did i end up handling that and have it yield a positive result and not a negative one i'm not going to explain the story to you because it's slightly long but i will give a little hint about it and basically i explained that there was uh, my co-workers had a situation and they came into me and they were like, I can't talk to that woman. She is being so berate and so this. And they didn't use that word. They said a lot of other colorful words. But they was like, she's being so this and so that and so this. And I was like, I was like, well, let me go talk to her. Like, maybe y'all are just, I don't know. Maybe I just don't have customer service skills. But I have worked in customer service. Like I told you, I work at JCPenney's. I work at Dress Bar. I have customer service experience. I know how to talk to customers. So if you haven't had that, it's a little hard for you to um know how to talk to a difficult customer, right? So I go out there. And this lady is, she is kind of mean. I'm not going to lie. She's cursing me out as I'm talking to her. Because she's like, I just don't understand. I don't understand how I come here every effing time. Every time I effing come here, y'all got new charges and new prices for me. This dog is one years old. It don't need no heartworm test. I was like, ma'am, hi. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a second. I was like, okay, so your dog's one years old, right? She's like, yeah, he's one years old. Okay. I said, so your dog was really supposed to have this heartworm test probably about eight months in like in, of age and he's one year old now we let you slide at eight months and gave you the prevention because we knew that maybe he'd be fine for a year which is honestly the wrong thing to do side note but we let them slide gave them the prevention 
And yeah, so now when you came back in a couple months, it's time because you need more prevention. On top of the fact that you already didn't get a heartworm test, so now you need a heartworm test. And she was like, he don't even go outside. He don't even step outside. How is he going to get heartworm disease? And she, I was like, ma'am, do you know how heartworm disease is, you know, spread? And she said, of course I do. Ticks. Y'all, I didn't want to laugh in her face because it's not respectful. So I said, actually, no, it's not ticks, it's mosquitoes. She said, well, regardless, he doesn't go outside, so I don't see why that matters. I said, ma'am, have you ever been bitten by a mosquito in your own home? And she said, well, yeah. I said, it's the same thing. I said, because all it takes is one infected mosquito that's carrying heartworm disease to bite your baby. And once the, once the mosquito bites your baby, who knows what could happen? So I was like, I think it's better for you to just stay on prevention because it already helps repel the mosquitoes. But in order for you to get the prevention, we got to make sure your dog is negative first because it's no point of us giving you prevention and he's heartworm positive. And she was like, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I said, it's okay. I was like, it happens. You didn't know, which is why I wanted to explain it to you so that we can talk about it. She said, well, I don't really have the money for that. I was like, I know. And I was like, I know it's expensive. Um, but I was like, I'm looking at, I don't remember the name of the dog. It was a little Pomeranian puppy. And I was like, I'm looking at so-and-so's nails. They look a little long, right? They look a little bit long. Um, she's like, yeah, they've been kind of scratching me up. I was like, yeah. So I was like, let's do this. You get the heartworm test and we give you the prevention as long as it's negative. I'll give you a free pedicure. It's just a pedicure. It's a puppy. I can do it myself. He's not going to move too much. It's a Pomeranian. I held it in my hand and clipped the nails in two seconds. She was like, I think I could do that. I said, okay. So I'm going to go back in. We're going to run a heartworm test. I'll give you the nail trim. And regardless, if he's heartworm positive or negative, we'll go from there, okay? And I'll let you know the results. And she was like, well, I appreciate you talking to me. She said, I'm sorry if I got a little, like, you know, out of control. I just be getting upset because I don't understand the pricing. And I don't understand why the dogs need these things. I said, trust me, it's okay. I, I do understand because you don't know. So that's why I came to tell you, girl. So I mean, I got you. I'm going to get you the pedicure. Give me your dog. Let's go back inside because this is when we were doing curbside, too. So I'm like, give me the dog. I'll go back inside. We'll get the heartworm test. I'll give you the pedicure. She was fine. So I went in. They came, I came up with the dog. And my coworkers are like, I was like, y'all just wasn't talking to her enough. I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I said I wasn't going to give y'all the whole story, but I did because I love that story because it shows you that sometimes people just don't know stuff and don't understand. And they, of course, we get frustrated about our money. We're not making enough and the economy is going to trash. So I understand. But that's an example of how I had to deal with a negative customer. Don't go using my story, y'all. No, I'm kidding. I trust y'all. So that's just an example of a prompt. They will give you, there's a, a whole bank of prompts. So it may not be a difficult customer. It may be something different, um, but that's how the prompts relate to a story in your life. And the story could be as simple as why are you in vet med? How did you get to this point? How did you get there? It could be that simple, um, especially if you don't have a traditional route of vet med where you just love puppies from a young age and then decided to become a veterinarian like me. Like, you know, not everybody has that story. This is like my last and final point, guys, because this is already like a 30 minute video. Finishing up the interview. So make sure you follow up with any questions that you have. These questions could be something something as simple as when will I hear back? Or it could be a question from your interviewer if you have one um, stating, hello, like, um, I just kind of, it's a bug in here. Oh, I got to kill it. Actually, I think it's a mosquito. Isn't that crazy? Oh, there it is. Dead, dead as hell. To finish up your interview, you can ask your interviewer, hey, like, what advice do you have for me going forward with VetMed? I think I asked my Tuskegee interviewer, I asked him, I said, so, I said, worst comes to worst, which I don't think it's going to happen, but worst comes to worst. Say I don't get in. I was like, what um, advice would you have for me viewing my application, viewing my GPA? Like, what advice would you give me? And he was like, that's a really good question. He was like, I would tell you if you end up not getting in. He, but he ended up saying, like, in the interview, he said, I don't think that's going to happen. But if it comes down to it, he was he's like, because I'm not the only one that makes the decisions around here. He said, I would tell you to come to our student enrichment summer program, which is actually in Alabama. He was like, because you'll not only get a chance to see what our curriculum is like, but you'll get a chance to network. And he said, I want you to network because he said, I like who you are as a person. And he said, I want you to, you know, network with the people here. And that way we could try to re re reapply with you, help you with your application the next cycle. He was like, because he said, I don't want you to not reapply. He said, I want you to reapply. He said, if it doesn't go through, you should reapply. He said, your application is very solid. He said, the only thing I think that you're kind of slacking in is your GPA. And my GPA was relatively low, like I told y'all before. Um, so he was like, your GPA is a little low. He says, the only thing I think that's kind of hindering you. He said, no, he said, he said, my GPA, he said, my, my experience was a little lacking, which was true. Because I don't, I didn't have a lot of experience with cows and horses and 
large animals before I got to school, vet school. So he was like, those would be my only two things about your application that I think don't qualify you as well as other candidates. That was a good question to ask him. It's nice to hear from somebody on a committee about what they think about your application because if you don't get in, you're like, well, why didn't I get in? Like, let me know. Let me know so I can fix this, so I can reapply and try again. Um, so I think you should ask one question if you have an interviewer. Uh, if you don't have an interviewer, I believe there's probably a section on Virginia, Maryland's app, um, not application interview that says questions and you've recorded a response. I don't remember if there was because um, I probably just trauma blocked it out because I was so nervous. I'm sure they leave a spot for questions. And if you do, I would just ask a question. And it could be something as simple as, hey, when do you, um, thank you all so much for taking the time to interview me. I want to know when exactly we'll hear back or, you know, when, or whatever your question is. And thank you so much for your time and leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time and energy. Like, that's, that's one thing I say. Thank you so much for your time and energy and reviewing my, taking the time to review my application. It means a lot to me just to let them know that you're grateful for the opportunity. Really nice to hear um, as somebody who, you know, I don't know, didn't expect that. Like, I, you know, you just don't really expect it. Um, and yeah, we had, we had well over three weeks to complete it. So you had time to complete that interview, but yeah guys so that's a little tidbit about me not really important but i hope i hope it really does motivate y'all to continue on with your journey in vet med um but i will always ask at least one question when you're finishing up your interview just at least one um if you have the opportunity to do so um so i'm gonna say this ahead of time because y'all are probably watching this early but if you're about to get an interview, or if you already got your interview, you want to, you probably wouldn't notice yet because you would get interviews and then you would probably search my video. But I digress. Congratulations, Pat. I, I'm clapping for y'all, okay? Because that's an accomplishment. This is the hardest part. And I promise you, if you get to this point, you rock your interview, you're going to get in. Like, just rock your interview and do the best you can. And if you don't, worst comes to worst, do this thing again. I promise you. Like, you're you're qualifying and keep that in mind and if you haven't applied yet know that you're still qualified like like i told y'all the guy told me my gpa was not the best and it wasn't it was a three point i don't even god it was it had to be a 3.2 something or 3.3 something it was very low for the recommended vet school requirement um and he said you don't really have large animal experience which i'm going to tuskegee think about it is in the middle of like the freaking nowhere so they got hella cows hella horses and i haven't touched none of them like so it's it's something to think about the same aspect know that if it's meant for you it's meant for you and believe in your heart that it's meant for you because it is like it's meant for y'all here's my conclusion statement that i'm going to read exactly the way it is on my notes remember that if you don't get into veterinary school your first try or into all of your school choices it's please understand that you didn't do poorly and it's not because of you please understand that please do um, it's a very competitive field and I encourage each and every one of you to try again until you reach your goal. I basically just said that, but I'm saying it again because that's how important I want y'all to drill it into your minds. So it's very important and to keep trying again. I love all of y'all so much because I do. And any advice you need, please know that I'm here. I don't care if you have to DM me at the bottom of this video, DM me on Instagram, DM me on whatever. I don't care if you go to my link in my bio or my Instagram and put a note, whatever you want to do, I'm here for y'all. I got your back. I'm going to help you to the best of your ability. Please don't go sending me all of your applications because I can't read every last one of them. But if I can, I will try my best to help you amidst my schedule. Um, Y'all know where to find me. I'm here. This is the end of this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and for tuning in. I wish you the best of luck in all of your interviews because you're going to kill it. Know that you're going to kill it. You better wake up in the mirror before the day of your interview and say, I'm going to murder this interview. I'm going to do so good that I'm going to get accepted. Speak it into existence and do what you need to do. Um, I love y'all. If you need anything, I'm here. But thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.